sometimes in the moment, you don't know what to say to establish your boundary. And here I was presupposing that he understood why I had said what I said, which was, can I do this online? Which I know I can. Because the just trust me yeah. is, listen, Alan, you don't get it right now. Yeah. And you need to know that you don't. And that's okay. But in the heat of this moment, you need to trust me. Conscious couples, business partners, and singles committed to attracting their dream partner. Welcome to the Conscious Couples podcast, where we share our life, love story, and combined relationship expertise to help you create and consistently cultivate the most magnificent intimate relationship possible. Never again will you feel hopeless and alone in your intimate relationship challenges. Having accumulated thousands of hours coaching conscious couples and individuals all over the world, as well as starting and growing a global business together, Alan and I are here to guide you and all things relationships. Thank you again for tuning into the one place where it's not about you or me. It's about the, the we. we. Conscious couples and individuals, welcome back to the one and only Conscious Couples podcast. Today we have episode number 97. We're coming up on 100. Whoop. How to navigate boundary violations. Ooh. Did I get that right, love? Mm -hmm. How to navigate boundary violations violations as always before we jump into this episode thank you thank you thank you to next level podcast solutions for producing this show and so many others all around the world spreading so much good personal growth self-improvement things thank you thank you thank you as always my love it's ladies first what is your intention for this episode and this is actually one that you wanted to do Definitely. that i didn't <laughs> no i'm kidding you'll you'll find out why that's playful in a minute Right. So my intention for our listeners is to help them feel more comfortable having uncomfortable conversations, especially around when someone tramps on, steamrolls, or violates a boundary, whether they knew it or not. Thankfully, in this case, Alan did not know the boundary that he had unintentionally steamrolled. Wah, wah. And I wanted to talk about this because I hear so often how frequently we have our boundaries being tramped on or steamrolled or violated. And then we have this unconscious feeling that bubbles up and out, whether it be in the moment or after of uncertainty, of disconnection, and there's a whole load of emotions that happen. So the other day, Alan and I, we were in Barnes & Noble, mm -hmm. one of our favorite places. Love it. And if you've listened to one of our last episodes, you'll know that that's one of both of our favorite places. And we're like having a whole day getting books. We're getting books for Books for Babes, which is our annual fundraiser. And we're going shopping and everything. And before you know it, we have probably what over like 300 books that we have. And we go to check out so many books, in fact, that we have a cart for the people that work there. <laughs> we actually asked for our own cart. That's how many books we were there to I buy. I forget the name of the cart. It's going to be like a V cart or something. Uh, yeah. It's, it's like, like it's so like, that you can stack the books feet high. Listen, Barnes and Noble folks, we're going to need one of those carts because we're going to spend 800 bucks here today. <laughs> um, and awesome. we're going to need our coffees for free. It's awesome. I'm kidding. We actually um, had a, a guy check us out. Enrique, shout out to you if you're listening, yes. who said that uh, we gave him our podcast. But anyways, that's that's aside from the story, we're checking out and it's a very stressful time for me, to be honest. And we were going through the motions. It just so happens. Y'all know the feels when like the back end doesn't have your email, right? You, you know, you have to change your phone number, which is ironic for this episode. We'll talk about later. Your address changed. Something happens on the back end of your account. And in this case for us, my email wasn't right. My phone number wasn't right. My whole address it, and it created a whole thing. So I'm going through it. And while we're trying to update so that we can get the points for the books for babes and make sure we can stretch every single donor's plus dollar. Plus the free bag. Plus the free bag that we got, right? Yep. So we're trying to stretch every single dollar from the donors that give books for babes two books for babes, four books, four babes. And well said. before you know it, <laughs> it is just such a stress ball. And I was, let's like, in all honesty, I was not emotionally prepared for this. Can I just add real quick too? So I kind of sprung this on Emilio. It was a 
date day movie theater. We went and saw Napoleon. It's awesome. And we were going to go into Barnes and Noble just for a little while, kind of get some coffees and a couple books. Yeah. I was like, sweetheart, let's just do the books for babes stuff now. Yeah. Let's get this done now. You're like, I am not emotionally prepared for this. <laughs> so what we end up doing is we pick out all the books in the kids section and we've got a whole stack of them and we're trying to hit $800 worth. That's our budget, but we're trying to stretch a dollar. We're trying yeah. to get as many books as we can, quality and quantity. Mm -hmm. We get up to the, the counter mm -hmm. and Enrique's there and he's, he's registering us and, and registering us. He's, he's cashing us out. He's helping he's me got with these, my account. He's, yeah. He's boxing stuff boxing up. Us but up. here's the thing. There, wait, we wait. only got to, there's a line of people yes. almost out the door because yep. we've chalked up the line yep. with our book. Giving. Sorry, keep going. No, no, that's okay. So, <laughs> so there's a line of people, angry mob waiting. Pretty much. I'm kidding. Christmas shoppers were coming in. At yeah, that they point. were definitely. They were and <laughs> here's the kicker. We get up there and we realize we've only got 500 bucks worth. Yeah. So I'm running out to grab more books kind of last minute because we got to hit our budget here because mm -hmm. we don't want to have to come back. Yep. We're, we're busy people. So I'm running around trying to get books, trying to hit this $800 budget. You're sitting there with Enrique, you know, uh, boxing out the mob of people, <laughs> essentially. He was so great. And he was very, very sweet. <laughs> and so, and all of your information with the Barnes & Noble account. account was jeffed. It's all oh, messed yeah. up. It's and thing. so I steamrolled you and that's the end of the episode no <laughs> so so you can finish yeah so essentially he was asking you know like you can put it in the pin pad you know update your number there and um, email name, yeah, name address everything. social security number pretty I'm much kidding. all of my information <laughs> and i am starting to get like i'm already hot at this point like i can feel i'm just like I, it, there's a lot of stress with the books for babes, not to mention like, okay, now you're asking for my information. There's a line of people that literally can overhear. They're already super focused on us because we are the weirdos with like a thousand books at this point. Alan's running back and forth doing like relay races with the books. And then are we at budget? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was literally a whole thing. The Barnes and Nobles, like people were great in helping us. But then all of a sudden, we hit I, 800 on the dot except for one book. We had to put one book back. I right. Just ruin it, it was up. awesome. You crushed it. But Thank then you. at that time where it's like, talk about a climax and just like, oh, no. Alan says, well, babe, just just give him your information or something like the mm -hmm. sort. Just give give him your information. And we'll we'll get it done now. And I'm thinking in that because you had said I want to do it online. Can I, I want to do it online later. Yeah. And really what you were thinking underneath that is I don't want to say this out loud in front of all these people. Yeah, and yeah. I didn't realize at all mm -hmm. that that was your intention. And so I really just was like, why not just do it now? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, hello. Very you know, forcefully, picture, my Picture dad. the movies where someone kicks under the table. It's like, why'd you kick Ooh, me? No, right. <laughs> yeah, why'd yeah, yeah. you kick me? I didn't kick you. <laughs> it was that, yeah. And in that moment, and I really want to highlight this, in the moment, like, I, in, I was triggered in that moment. Emotionally flooded, all of the the pressure from the books for babes. It was awesome that we got that done. And I'm super grateful for that. However, in that moment and what our listeners I hope can res resonate with is sometimes in the moment, you don't know what to say to establish your boundary. And here I was presupposing that Alan, number one, can read my mind, right? No, I was presupposing that he understood why I had said what I said, which was, can I do this online? Which I know I can. Yeah. And in that pre presupposition was where I think where this episode really comes from, because in me presupposing that my partner understood all of my inner world is just not fair. Number one, but number two, that's not fair. You didn't feel cared me. about in that moment. Exactly. Yeah. And, and the truth is in hindsight, I should have been aware of this in my opinion, because you have expressed some things in your past with stalkers and mm -hmm. challenges you've had with giving away your information. Plus you just got a new burner phone. I'm kidding, <laughs> but you did get a new phone with a new number and yeah. you have expressed to me that, that you want to keep your number private as yeah. possible and only give it to specific people. So yeah. it's very clear at in hindsight that you felt uncared about and disrespected. Understandable. Yeah. And I had no idea. Right. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know until later that night when we got home. So Exactly. Yeah. So what I ended up saying, I actually just like, I think a lot of people do in that moment, which was when the stress was so high, you just end up fawning, i.e. do whatever just to make this situation go away because it's your over threshold of what you can handle at that point. And that was me. And so what I ended up doing, I was 
very quiet. But Fawning, speaking. by the way, for our new listeners means appeasing. appeasing. You just kind of appease so. the moment. Mm-hmm. It's fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. And when you're triggered, sometimes you just appease. Yeah. yeah. And I, I rarely do that. However, that was definitely an interesting moment of reflection of like, oh, wow. I just overrode that little voice inside of me that was like, explain why you just asked this. But all of our parts happen at those moments and they say, don't worry about it. They're just, all these things happen yeah, in our own quote moments. unquote, not a big deal. Not a big deal. We gaslight ourselves, tell ourselves that we're crazy for thinking what we want. When in all reality, what that voice is telling you is this is a boundary and I don't know how to communicate in the time pressures and all of this. And so I'm just going to stay small. Can Instead you also of- explain gaslighting briefly? kind of make yourself feel crazy oh yeah yeah okay dilute yourself into what your truth is and my truth was that i was uncomfortable i was not okay with expressing what my home address was what my phone number was what my email was my name all in one setting because i have experiences in the past where i have been put at risk as a result of stalker situations Mm -hmm. people knowing my information that i don't want to have and so with that, we kind of wrap up. I, I end up telling Enrique my information. He's entering it in there. Turns out and ended up creating two accounts, which... And Enrique, by the way, which you might have anticipated. <laughs> Enrique, if you're listening, we weren't worried about you, sir. We're good. We know you're a kind soul. <laughs> he was actually so yeah, sweet. Was Thank sweet. goodness. The yep. best ever. But, whoop, excuse me. Um, With that being said, we left and I had just that drive of kind of wiping it off like it it wasn't a big deal but I know all of our listeners can resonate with the fact that when you have a boundary violation like that it kind of hangs with you it like kind of makes a home and there's an uncertainty and at this point what's happening to sorry to interrupt you love but you're kind of future pacing this of if he's not aware of how he just steamrolled that situation referring to me in the third person yep What is our future going to be like? I really need to make sure that I honor myself and communicate to him what this felt like because otherwise that will keep happening, right? So it might not have been a big deal in that moment. It was, but it's going to be a really big deal if, if I'm not aware of how you felt. Yeah. And especially in that time too, it was like that little part of me, I heard a catastrophization, which was an internal thought that was like, what if there's a murderer in line? What if they overhear my, you know, and then the internal dialogue that's very scared as a result of this started to go down a a narrative. Yeah. A a fear. Very scary. Right. Irrational fears too. Right. Irrational. So now I come back, we're back at home. We've unboxed, we've kind of situated ourselves. It was later in the evening. And I had a choice, just like all of us have a choice when it comes to boundary violations. When you have someone that tramps, steamrolls, violates a boundary that internally, you know, your truth is like, "Mm, we got to address that or "Mm, it's uncomfortable, but you know that that's important to you. I want all of our listeners to feel comfortable leaning in to the discomfort per my intention. Yeah. And it feels like this. It's like, oh shit, I got to bring this up. Yeah. Damn, I don't want to bring this up, but I've got to. And yeah. that, and that's your highest self saying, courage. It's exactly. time for courage. Exactly. And and exactly what you said, babe. So our call with Alan and Amelia was just incredibly valuable. It was really cool to see that in just one session, we were able to go so deep and to cover so many topics and without going too much into the troubles, without getting depressive or negative or anything like that. And it was just amazing to see that at the end of the call, we were able to hop off the call with way more resources and way better equipped to build trust and to resolve our conflicts more effectively in the future than we were to begin with. So we got a lot of value from it and way more than we were both expecting. Not because we had low expectations, but because they really over-delivered. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really just great to be able to chat with someone and just connect with another couple that's really interested in, you know, growth and becoming better people and becoming better partners. So it was just really fun to actually be able to connect with someone that's really invested in each other and the relationship and everything. Yeah. They felt like really good friends that happen to be very wise. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) So thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. So here's what I did and you can take your own approach in this, but I really wanted to just bring the three primary elements of what you actually do when there is a boundary violation in the aftermath. 
you check in with how you're feeling. And like I said, if that truth is still hanging with you, which likely it is, you need to find what your truth was to yourself, right? Because when you're in that moment, for example, going back to that moment when I was at the register and Alan had unintentionally steamrolled me, there were a lot of parts of me that were activated. You heard the inner dialogue of the very scared, fearful, irrational part that like, what if there's a murderer that gets, you know, like, and then there's other parts here too. So you, number one is checking in. What is your truth and what was the boundary? The boundary for me was I am not comfortable with just anyone having my address, my phone number, my email, my personal details. That is a boundary for me. And now that you have clarity as to what that boundary is for you, whenever you have an uncom- uncomfortable situation or your boundary is violated, you have that truth. Here comes the courageous part, which is what you just referred to, babe. Number two, that that's great if you have awareness of your boundary. But here's the thing, because you're in a relationship, other people want to be in their, in your life. Likely other people want to respect you. They want to honor you and they want to help you value what you value. And that's what boundaries are for. But no one can help you do that if you're not communicating vulnerably what your boundaries are to them. So the number two thing is where a lot of us actually go off track and a part of us just steamrolls ourselves and say, we we shouldn't bring it up, you know, and this is and where it's not worth it or yeah. it's going to be a fight or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Or maybe I've done that in the past and no one listened, which I know you and I have a lot of experience with, which we'll talk about in another episode. But what's the third one? Number two is that vulnerable confrontation. So what I had done or what I did with you was, hey, babe, can we talk about something that really bothered me Mm -hmm. earlier today? I, I do recall asking you and you gave me permission, which was good. You helped to provide that emotional space for this. And then we actually talked about it. When X happened, so for example, when Enrico was asking for my personal information, you remember that moment, you're like, yeah, yeah, I do. You had kind of just steamrolled me in that moment. I was super uncomfortable and I didn't want to give my information, but you encouraged me to do so, which I understand, but I don't want to do that again. Can we not moving forward, make sure that we steamroll those moments? Mm -hmm. Can you honor that boundary of mine? And you were so sweet. You took ownership. You said, yeah. And um, I would like the listeners to hear from your perspective how that was for you and what you kind of contributed in that conversation. Because I think a lot of us become fearful when we approach and confront our vulnerable, courageous moment of sharing the boundary violation because we're there's a part of us that catastrophizes, i.e. makes it a bigger deal than it actually ends up becoming. And I think your perspective on that moment is actually going to be really powerful for other people to realize that it might not be that bad, which is what usually a part of us thinks it's going to be. I think the the first thing is what it always comes down to, which is, yeah, I think intuitively I knew that something was off. I just didn't know what. Mm -hmm. And I went back to that moment. I was like, oh, yeah, I totally steamrolled her at that moment. And by steamroll, what I mean is... Now that I understand why she was hesitant to give her information, I connected that back to conversations we've had in the past. And I was also in the heat of the moment and I knew there there's two roads. One is, well, I didn't know and, you know, poor me, mm-hmm. but that's useless in my opinion. <laughs> uh, so to me, it was take ownership for what your part in this was. Like I could have and probably should have honored you more in that moment and I know that I even knew that at the time to an extent Mm -hmm. I didn't understand the extent of it right you know but it was move forward let's rock yeah and I know why in the future you are having this conversation with me to make sure that I don't do that and so I took ownership and then I just said babe I will do everything I can to make sure that never happens again Mm -hmm. and that's what I said and it's it's really important I think it, it comes down to humility and then it takes down, it comes to taking responsibility and ownership for your part in it. Mm-hmm. And then not just ownership for right now and what just happened, but more importantly, what are you going to do for the future? Because if you don't feel seen in this, you don't have certainty that I'm going to honor your boundaries. And if I don't honor that boundary, what other boundaries am I not going to honor? And right. that's how you start to erode the trust of a relationship. But I, I don't want to complexify this much more than what we've already done. So sweetheart, what's the third step? 
Yeah. The third step is create a plan of what you would prefer. What is the preferred yeah. behavior in moments like that? And so in the future, you'd prefer doing it online. Yeah. I would prefer doing it online yeah. and just trusting that I'm asking that question for a reason because that's my preference and I'm going to do that. And do not just say, let's just roll forward yeah. because I have my reasons. And though I might not be able to expand, expand on those in those time frame, or maybe I don't want to, and I don't feel comfortable. Um, just trust that. Yeah. Just trust that, please. Okay. And one tiny layer further, you could, if you wanted to create a safe word for lack of better phrasing, which Definitely. is a, a trigger of just trust me. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just, okay. Even though I don't get it and I don't understand it in this moment, which I really do wish, again, in hindsight, that you too. had used, just trust me. I don't pull that card out enough. You don't, in my opinion. I've literally asked <laughs> Emilia to use this card. Yeah. She never uses it. <laughs> which is, again, I'm going to get better. Uh, yeah, okay. So, because the just trust me yeah. is, listen, Alan, you don't get it right now. Yeah. And you need to know that you don't, and that's okay. But in the heat of this moment, you need to trust me. And, and I'll give a simple example. So, Emilia is very intuitive, and she understands... Uh, a lot of things that I don't. And so we go gro grocery shopping and I'll be like, ah, we don't need the bags. And <laughs> she'll be like, just trust me. And and sure enough, we need the bags. So I wish you would play that card more. Um, <laughs> and I will trust it when you play the card. And now here's the risk. If you play that card and you abuse that card, it's like the kid who cried wolf. Mm -hmm. And it's you keep crying wolf and there's no wolf. Eventually when there is a wolf, the person's not going to come. Right. right. That kind of thing. So for our listeners to bring it back to them, let's just go through the steps. Quick summary and um, make sure that you are at least identifying when these boundaries are being violated and then courageously communicating that to your partner. And if your partner is not humble enough to take ownership, that is something to be concerned about. And that's my genuine truth. I'm just going to call a spade on a spade on that. Mm. Yeah. So step there's three steps here that we shared. Um, in terms of how to navigate boundary violations. And I'll put in the disclaimer that this is in the aftermath, not immediately confronting it right then and there, just mm -hmm. be, for purposes of the example that we use. So number one is identifying first within yourself. So this is going inwardly and getting clear on what specifically was the boundary that was violated. And to that point, what was the behavior that was violating that boundary? So Alan's saying, come on, let's go. Let's just move forward. That yeah. was the behavior. In this case, it was steamrolling. Right. Steamrolling. What we labeled as steamrolling. Number two is the vulnerable confrontation or asking, can we have a conversation about something that bothered me a little bit earlier today? That's number two, where you bring up what the behavior was that infringed upon violated or steamrolled your boundary. Okay. So you're calling out that specific behavior so that you can help the person not do that behavior essentially. And then step number three is propose a, a better alternative in terms of how you would like them to respond when you do assert that boundary. So for example, babe, when I say, can we do it online? Please just trust me mm -hmm. or please just say, all right, you got this, you know, something like that. So those are the three steps. And I will say that um, I wouldn't be able to have these conversations if it weren't for Alan being emotionally available. And if it weren't for him having that courageous humility, that belief of trying to get better as a team. And so those I would certainly endorse are essential from the person on the other side, because I know how scary it can be. For someone that you care about, when you violate their boundary, it can be very scary to receive that feedback, especially if you have a fixed mindset. So there have been a lot of people that have not honored or respected your boundaries in your past, like to an alarming extent. And so your fear, I just want to be transparent. It It's you don't have to be that scared to bring things like this up. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, yeah, no, totally. Yeah, it was uh, super fair. easy. Yeah, totally fair. I uh, won't happen again, <laughs> to the best of my ability. Yeah. And if I make another mistake, we'll bring it up again. It's all good. We're gonna keep failing yeah. forward. Great but point. I understand why you're scared because in the past people got super defensive and lash out, uh, make I you mean, feel crazy for course, your own boundaries, gaslight you, all that. So yeah. that's happening to all of us to some extent. Yeah. So be aware of that, and and you need to honor your inner self. Mm -hmm. because your highest self is telling you something's off yeah and it's very very important you gotta and trust that this happens constantly all day every day and, and there's a way to handle it where you 
feel empowered after rather than shrink, 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 shrink every time mm-hmm. your boundaries infringed upon. Okay. okay. Uh, we do not know what our next episode is yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, thank you all so much. So if you're out there and you feel like this is a challenge that you've had or you and your partner are not on the same page, 2024 is coming up. We actually just recently, we're pretty sure we just got another new couple that we get to coach. And I say get to because I'm so pumped. But if you feel like you and your partner need to get on the same page in 2024, you feel like you're on the fritz, you feel like you're struggling, you feel like you're fighting, you feel like you're not having good conflict resolution like what we described here. If you were in a situation like that conversation Emilia and I had and it was going to go south and you cannot resolve conflict for a bigger, better, brighter future, you need relationship talks coaching. So if you've never done couples counseling before or couples coaching or relationship talks coaching, I'm telling you it is nothing short of an absolute game changer. Mm -hmm. If you've never had a coach or a therapist, it, it will change your whole world. So come join us, a free session, safe space to talk about what's real and to get back on the same page. That link. the link will be in the show notes. Heck yeah. And with that, after you book that, make sure you register for our next free relationship talks event, which is going to be the, the 30th of free events ni- that we free done. 99. Free 99. It's going to be actually when this episode launches the, the coming Thursday. So December 21st at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can come in your Snuggies. You can come in your onesies. It is going to be digging into all the things that we feel. <laughs> you can also come dressed regular if you want. You can too. Yeah, yeah. That's always welcome. Um, By the way, it is this Thursday. Yeah. It is this coming Thursday. Yep. So honoring relationship boundaries, which is ironic to this episode. Yeah. Especially during the holidays. During the holidays, we are all stressed the F out. And this is Christmas week, yeah. Yeah. What's, what's uh, the no, date again? The, the next week is after after this week when this episode launches. Christmas is going to be, I think, the following Monday or Tuesday. Okay. So, with that said, have a thriving holiday season, holiday hoobity wuddy, with honoring relationship boundaries. We hope to see you there. The link is going to be in the show notes to register. You can join without your mic. You can join without your camera on. You can literally just listen in. It's super, super helpful for those who are struggling, who need to honor their boundaries more during the holidays. And you can get around other couples just like you who are trying to make it all better. Thank you all for joining us on this amazing journey to help your relationships flourish. Thank you for looking in the tough mirrors that will transform you and therefore your relationship. We appreciate you. As always, it's not about you or me. It's about the the we. we. We'll talk to you next time. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Conscious Couples Podcast. We love connecting with the Conscious Couples community, so please make sure you follow us on Instagram. I am at Evolve with Amelia and Alan is a Lazarus 88. Also, if you or your partner resonated with this episode, leave us a review at the link in the show notes and please share this with someone you love and care about. Until next time, remember, it's not about you or me. It's about the we.